Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Mindspace Business Parks Reads Earnings Conference Call for Financial Results for the Quarter and here ended March 31st, 2022. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone telephone. Please note that this call is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Kedar Kulkarni. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the fourth quarter and full year financial year 2022 earnings call for Mindspace Business Park Read. At this point, we would like to highlight that the management may make certain statements on this call that may constitute forward-looking statements. Please be advised that our actual results may differ materially from these statements. Mindspace REIT does not guarantee these statements or results and is not obliged to update them at any time. We would like to reiterate that the acquisition of asset SPVs by Mindspace REIT was effected on July 30, 2020. Consequently, consolidation of financials of these asset SPVs with Mindspace REIT has been done effective August 1, 2020. Condensed consolidated full year 2021 numbers therefore reflect eight months financial performance of these asset SPVs. However, for the purpose of comparison, in the earnings presentation and for the purpose of this call, we have provided pro forma revenue from operations and net operating income for FY21. I would now like to welcome Vinod Johira, our CEO, and Preeti Chera, our CFO. Vinod will share the business update, growth opportunities, and his views on macro environment and the sector. Preeti will further share an update on the financial performance. We will then open the call to q and I now hand over the call to Vinod. <laughs> Thank you, Keda. Good afternoon to all participants. Hope you and your families have been safe and are doing well. Thank you for joining Mindspace REIT's earnings call. While the year saw major disruptions caused by the pandemic putting the fundamentals of our business to test, we have emerged stronger and more resilient from this crisis. Financial year 2022 ended as one of our best years with a 4.5 million circa square foot leased in the REIT portfolio and an additional 2.9 million square feet in our row 4 portfolio, taking the cumulative number to 7.4 million square feet. Almost all our under construction buildings witnessed pre-commitments. Our net operating income for the year stood at INR 14.9 billion, a growth of 8.2% over the previous year. We have achieved a releasing spread of 31% during the year. Our on-campus developments led to an increase in total leasable area from 30.2 million square feet to 31.8 million square feet as on March 31st, 2022. The growth in the portfolio is primarily on account of increase in area of our new building at our Pune asset on account of additional FSI, redevelopment of old buildings at Hyderabad and commencement of construction of new recreational and entertainment areas at Hyderabad and Mumbai parks. The market value of our portfolio now stands at INR 264 billion as on March 31st, 2022, up by circa 5.7% over March 31, 2021. We have completed refinancing of over INR 9 billion via debenture raises from mutual funds and insurers as our overall cost of debt now stands reduced by circa 50 basis points during the year to circa 6.6%. Our distribution for the year stood at circa INR 10.9 billion or INR 18.4 per unit. A number of factors played out during the year which helped us clock strong numbers, robust business performance, primarily of the IT industry, sharp jump in employment, occupiers intent to provide an experiential work environment to their employees and the rising preference towards quality grade A assets managed professionally. Let us elaborate these factors in more detail. As envisaged, occupiers do not want to risk or compromise on asset quality as they restart their journey towards office occupancy. There is a strong desire to create and provide wellness and experiential work environments. We had anticipated this trend to play out. As highlighted during our earlier calls, we have been using this downtime to upgrade our assets, which would have been tougher to carry out at full occupancies. The upgrades have been executed, laying special emphasis on improving sustainability, building aesthetics, wellness, health and safety, providing recreation, amenities, and thereby offering the right balance at the workplace. The positive impact of these actions 
has begun to show with top-notch occupiers gravitating towards such offerings. To quote one such example, we have recently inaugurated the one kilometer long skywalk within our MySpace Madhapur at Hyderabad, allowing seamless connectivity from the metro station to their office doorstep. The skywalk has not just helped to reduce the discomfort caused by vehicular traffic to pedestrian movement, but also led to significant reduction of carbon footprints generated by last mile transportation of vehicles, as well as reducing the noise and traffic within our park. The Skywalk also houses a Vantage Cafe along with kiosks and breakout spaces, providing food, recreation, and entertainment offerings. As our occupiers and their employees begin to return to office, they are pleasantly surprised by the transformation and the stress-free travel to their office spaces. It is fast becoming a new landmark for the city of Hyderabad. Many such interventions will change the face of workspaces. The IT industry has reached another inflection point led by increased spend on digitization by companies globally. Unlike the previous inflection point of Y2K, which was led by cost arbitrage models, this time around it is led by intellectual value added services like data analytics, cloud management, and artificial intelligence amongst others. The record addition to headcount of IT companies in India is testament to the renewed growth prospects. As per NASCOM reports, the strength of IT companies is expected to cross over 5.1 million in financial year 22, reaching a record high, with additions of circa 4.5 lakh employees during the year. Hiring of freshers by top technology companies is expected to be up 2.5 times over financial year 21. India had 1430 plus GCCs at the end of financial year 21. This count is expected to grow at a CAGR of 6 to 7% to reach 2000 plus GCCs by financial year 25. In the same period, the headcount of GCCs is expected to grow two times at a CAGR of circa 12% reaching 2 million by financial year 25. These new hiring trends are estimated to translate into significant addition to new office space demand. Back to office plans of occupiers has started gaining momentum. Today's industry leaders clearly understand the importance of workspace in shaping the culture of organizations to promote collaboration, innovation, and growth. Employees have come to realize the importance of having a dedicated and distinguished work environment. If we refer to the recent earnings call of several top Indian IT companies, a definite return to workspace plan is in motion. We are witnessing this return to office play out on the ground as well. The physical occupancy in our parks has increased from circa 23 to circa 23% in May 2022 from just 14% during March 22. Based on our conversations with our occupiers, we expect it to cross 50% by the second half of this year. Over the past two years, many companies have expanded and hired a record number of people, and they intend to host their employees back in extension work environments by replacing the densified spaces with more focus on recreation and wellness. As employees start returning to office, we anticipate occupiers to expand their footprint to cater to increased headcount, coupled with de-densification requirements. This will generate demand for more space. Large occupiers have begun their search for consolidation and expansion, leading to a spike in demand for under construction assets. Our ROFO assets have also witnessed similar trends. We expect this strong uptake in demand for under construction assets to continue. To cater to this demand, we have brought forward the construction timelines of our under construction buildings across parks. At Mindspace Madhapur, we have now commenced the 1.3 million square foot redevelopment project with an additional potential to create more attractive tenants to come to our parks. Additionally, we have commenced work on creating an experience center for recreation and entertainment within that park. At our MySpace Iroli East Park, we are developing a similar high street experience for food, entertainment, and recreation. All these additions are part of our endeavor towards changing the workspace landscape by bringing fresh energy for the young millennials who form a major part of the nation's workforce. We continue to explore opportunities for growth organically and inorganically. At present, we are evaluating the ROFO opportunity to acquire the 1.8 million square feet fully leased asset at Commerzone Madhapur, which was announced during quarter three financial year 22. I would now like to take you through the specific operational updates for the fourth quarter. We have leased circa 0.7 million square feet during the fourth quarter, of which 0.2 million square feet was releasing, and 0.5 million square feet was on account of new and vacant area leasing. The average rent achieved on the 0.7 million square feet leasing was INR 63 per square foot per month. 
Rents have remained steady in our micro markets and we continue to see the same trajectory. The committed occupancy of the portfolio stood at 84.3%. Our net operating income for the quarter grew by 6.6% sequentially to INR 390. The weighted average cost of debt stands at circa 6.6%, which is amongst the lowest in the industry. The cost of debt has come down by circa 260 basis points since March 2020. Our distributions for the quarter stood at INR 2.7 billion or INR 4.61 per unit. Our portfolio is now further diversified with over 175 plus tenants compared to 160 plus tenants at the end of financial year 21. Following up from the third quarter announcement on British Safety Council's seven Sword of Honor awards, we have won an additional two Sword of Honors, taking the total of nine Sword of Honors. These awards reward those organizations that have reached the pinnacle of health, safety, and environmental management. We are proud to announce that MySpace REIT is a great place to work certified. We look forward to another year of resilience and growth, setting up new benchmarks at our parks, and continue to be amongst the most preferred asset manager partners in the growing need for increased tech-enabled workspaces. The union budget had acknowledged the importance of SEZs, as on the Indian economy, we expect the policies to be suitably reformed during this financial year, which would allow SEZ and non-SEZ spaces to coexist within the same parks. The strong leasing demand we are seeing for our denotified buildings gives us confidence to lease out the vacant SEZ spaces post their denotification. With large occupiers firming up on their back-to-office plans, we expect smaller ones to follow suit. The strengthening of rents has offered an opportunity to greater mark-to-market leasing allowing for an upside by leasing the current vacant spaces. With this backdrop, I hand over the call to Preeti to take you through the financial updates during the year. Thank you, Vinod. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm happy to present our financial performance for the quarter and year ended 31st March 2022. We closed the fourth quarter of the financial year 2022 with the revenue from operations of INR 4.7 billion. Net operating income for Q4 FI22 stood at INR 4 billion, a strong 10.6% growth over Q4 FI21, and a 6.6% increase on a sequential basis. Our net operating income for the year stood at INR 14.9 billion, a growth of 8.2% over the previous year. We continue to maintain NOI margin at 80% plus throughout the year. We announced a distribution of approximately INR 2.73 billion, which is INR 4.61 per unit for the quarter. The distribution comprises approximately 93.5%, which is 4.3 per unit of dividend, which is not subject to tax in the hands of unit holder, and approximately 6.5%, which is 0.31 per unit of interest. This translates to an annualized distribution yield of 6.7% on the issue side. Cumulatively, for the financial year 2022, we distributed INR 10.9 billion, which is INR 18.4 per unit. On the funding side, our leverage on the portfolio on a consolidated basis continued to remain low at 15.7%. Our net debt as on March 31st, 2022 was INR 42 billion. We have undrawn committed lines of INR 6.8 billion from financial institutions. Our robust balance sheet provides us the flexibility to pursue both organic and inorganic growth opportunities. During the quarter, we raised INR 5 billion through issuance of listed non-convertible debentures at an attractive coupon of 6.35% per annum. We converted INR 9 billion of a variable cost debt to fixed cost debt during the year, thus taking our fixed cost debt as a percentage of the total outstanding debt of the portfolio to 45.9%. In aggregate, we further reduced our borrowing cost by approximately 50 bits during the financial year 2022. We continue to pursue opportunities to further optimize our borrowing cost. The gross value of our portfolio as valued by the independent valuer stood at INR 264 billion as at March 31st, 2022, which is a 5.7% increase over the value as at 31st March 2021. Our NAV per unit has increased to INR 364.9 per unit as on 31st March 2022 from INR 345.2 per unit as at 31st March 2021. Post the approval of the board, we consummated the sale of approximately 40 acres of land at Mindspace Pocharam Hyderabad for a consideration of INR 1.2 billion. 
Further to the Rupo notice received in respect of Commerce Zone Madhapur and basis the approval from the governing board to evaluate the opportunity, the manager has onboarded advisors and has progressed with the diligence. Our investor base continues to expand, especially since the reduction in trading lot size. Since listing, our unit holder base has grown threefold to approximately 24,000 unit holders as on March 31st, 2022. We expect positive regulatory reforms to help improve liquidity and deepen the market for these instruments. To conclude, the improving market conditions for commercial real estate and the positive leasing trends are expected to help the growth of NOI and distributions from the portfolio in the coming financial year. With this, I request the operator to now open the floor for Q&A. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may enter star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue and your questions have been answered, you may enter star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking your question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. To ask a question, you may enter a star and one. We have the first question from the line of Adidev Chattopadhyay from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. And firstly, congratulations on doing very well in a very tough and challenging overall environment for the office leasing space. Uh, sir, you spoke about a lot of traction in the leasing and you expect things to improve significantly going forward. So could you just quantify this in terms of uh, what is our gross leasing expectation for the year? We have done four and a half last year. So for this, for this year, what is a lower or upper end for leasing? And if you could break it up into of the expiry is a 1.1 million square feet, which you have in 23, how much do you expect to retain? Uh, how much exits and versus that how much fresh leasing in the existing assets? And uh, so any guidance on pre-commitments on leasing for the upcoming assets? That's the first question. Hi, Ajitib. Uh, you're asking me to tell you exactly what I'm not supposed to communicate. <laughs> Having said that, the trend seems to be quite reasonably strong. We are quite uh, excited about the market demand dynamics in each of our micro markets. I can just give you a, a broad highlight on primarily the, the releasing space that comes for terminations for stroke expiry this year. Only 1.1 million square feet in our portfolio comes for the churn this year. Out of that, we already have a visibility of almost 600,000 square feet of releasing. And we are just at the beginning of the year. Uh, for under construction, most of our assets we released last year. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have lost the line for the management. Kindly stay connected until we reconnect them. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the line for the management reconnected. Uh, so please go ahead. Yeah, sorry about that. Just got cut. So we are seeing uh, demand on under construction assets across the board. Okay. So and uh, if you could, uh, this question may is for Preeti. So is there any broader guidance on NOI and uh, DPU for the the growth being a single digits or double digits? Any lower or upper end again for the DPU? Yeah, so other days, uh, we're not giving any guidance in terms of exact numbers, but as Vinod said, we are pretty positive about the growth numbers for next year. And obviously, uh, the huge amount of leasing that we've done this year also will start generating rent uh, as we move ahead uh, in the quarters. Obviously, we're not going to see all the rent starting from quarter one, but as we move ahead in the financial year, we should be able to see, uh, you know, increasing rent, and therefore, that should translate in NOI and uh, dividend growth. So... I would end at that. Okay. Fine, fine. Yeah. Thank you and all the best. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, you may enter a star and one. We have the next question from the line of Mohit Agrawal from IIFL. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my first question is, you know, in the NDCF lockdown, uh, we see that the CapEx number has gone up substantially. 
uh, on a QOQ basis, you know, from about uh, 100, 140 crore run rate to more than 200 crore. So any any reason uh, for that? So, uh, hi. This, so that's essentially because of uh, some of the assets also which are uh, almost nearing completion. Uh, we've also incurred spends on upgradation of our parks, which of course has been continuing, but some of them are almost uh, seeing conclusion. And also uh, some of the projects which have just started off, some of the buildings which we've started off. So it's cumulative uh, impact of, you know, seeing the assets almost nearing completion, the buildings which were under construction. So that's essentially it's just routine. And obviously, as the assets come to the end, at that point in time, you see more spend. Okay. So almost okay. all your bombshell finishings, etc., happen towards the end. So that's why you see a higher towards the end. Okay. Uh, okay. My second question is, you know, on your gross leasing numbers, uh, you know, specifically for you, what we've seen is that uh, you've been able to lease a lot of uh, under construction assets. Uh, just trying to understand, uh, you know, uh, what's the thought process of the tenants there, if you could give some color, uh, you know, who are these kind of tenants and probably what is the inclination to, uh, you know, uh, you know, lease out under construction assets versus ready inventory where also so you have you have uh, vacancy available. So could you give some color on you know which which uh, which kind of tenants are these and you know what is their thought process? Sure. If you uh, if you can just rewind back a few quarters in our conversation, we had said that you will start seeing the bigger demand for the 12-18 month scheduled supply, which will come up first when people want to see growth in the next 12 to 18 months. So all of those customers actually came where they had a sizable need for space, whether it was half a million to a million square feet or more. For that, if a building is under construction, it can suitably get customized for the newer age office space requirements that most of these customers are looking for. And just as we had looked at it in the past, you got those opportunities in the right place at the right time for the right assets. And they were very concerned about health and safety protocols, asset management, et cetera which kind of triggered the need to go into safe havens in parks where they could see all of that as the right mix for their employees when they want to come back to work. And that's really the opportunity we grabbed with both hands. Okay, okay, understood. And and my last question is, uh, you know, just wanted to ha uh, get a thought process of the sponsor or management on the non-ROFO sponsor owned assets. So let's say, you know, we talk about uh, the Ultimus asset at Worley. Uh, just trying to understand, could these assets be also considered by the REIT to to be, you know, uh, purchased directly from the sponsor, or will they first have to be a part of the ROFO arrangement, and then it can be inducted into the REIT? So as per what we had envisaged and projected out right at the start, we are excited about a lot of ROFO opportunities, wherein wherever the assets are a million plus, uh, and uh, pre-identified or assets which will be under construction in the sponsor group, which could be offered first as a ROFO to the REIT. So a lot of those opportunities exist across markets, and we're looking at those assets very closely because that will give us the growth we want for our REIT besides looking at inorganic opportunities. Okay, so the way I understand is that it's not uh, necessary for it to be a part of the ROFO. Uh, uh... So, uh... Uh, all the assets which are, uh, you know, above a particular threshold as per a ROFA arrangement uh, would be offered uh, to the REIT. And now, obviously, assets where we have other joint venture partners, those are the assets which, of course, uh, before they come to the REIT, uh, we would have to have discussions. So, but otherwise, largely, a uh, large chunk of the sponsor assets should be available uh, to us. And specifically, Ultimus was in any case being built when we did the REIT, so... Okay, okay, understood, understood. Uh, thanks a lot, and that's all from my side. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Kunal Dayal from Bank of America. Please go ahead. Sure, thank you. A uh, couple of questions from my side. Uh, you know, the first one, you know, did hear your comment that demand generally should be strong as you look out into, uh, into fiscal 23. Um, any additional color is, uh, as to, you know, whether the leasing momentum has already picked up or should we expect to, uh, you know, this to build up gradually through the course of the coming year? 
And likewise, by market, would you think that, uh, you know, between your two big um, exposure areas of, uh, of uh, Mumbai region and Hyderabad, one could do significantly better versus the other? Because you know, there have been certain comments saying that the return to office has just been so much, stro uh, so much stronger a trend in Mumbai and that, that might just do better. So and any comments there would be great. Sure. So uh, the way I see it uh, is primarily the large big ticket demand drivers have started coming onto the street to look at quality assets. Most of these guys are looking at something in the pipeline which gives them 12 to 18 months to start occupying those assets. And following them, you will start looking at the 100, 200, 300,000 square foot demand, which is beginning to start to come in most micro markets. So that is what we had envisaged six months ago and three months ago, and that's what's panning out in the marketplace right now. So you will see both kinds of demand in each of these markets. Now coming back to Hyderabad and Mumbai, uh, our Hyderabad as asset has about a million square feet worth of churn opportunity. And we are quite ex excited actually about that purely because rents have firmed up in those micro markets. So today to me, that vacancy is actually far more valuable because we've already done the hard work of upgrading. And now we are waiting for demand to come and grab this asset at the prices that we want them. Uh, for the Mumbai asset, like we mentioned to you, we are denotified a million square feet, which is under construction. We saw significant demand for that asset. Half of that is already pre-leased. And the rest of the half, I wouldn't be surprised if it gets leased really quickly in this financial year uh, while we are completing the building in this quarter. So the demand is certainly there the way we are projected. We're just waiting for the SEC clarity on allowing for non sec occupiers, and then we'll start looking at filling up those spaces as we're envisaged as well. Got that. Uh, thanks, Vinod. Uh, the second question, uh, Priti, uh, you know, just in terms of um, the the NDCF outlook for the year, uh, should we expect that uh, you know the NDCF growth trend could mirror uh, the revenue growth trend? Because you know, I'm assuming that because of rental advances, uh, you know, that might be one factor which aids your distribution. But um, capex again could be on the higher side. So, any color on how could uh, NDCF compare vis-a-vis -vis the revenue growth outlook? Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, so, no, uh, that would not be the case because uh, the revenue growth. There are deductions after NOI before we reach the distributions in terms of tax, interest, etc. So uh, the revenue growth will not necessarily trans uh, translate to a similar distribution growth. But directionally, as I said, with the revenue growth happening next year, you should see an increase in the distributions as well. But it may not be commensurate. Understood. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Kunal Lakhan from CLSA. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, good evening. Uh, so, you know, the, my first question was on uh, Heroli West. Uh, so, our vacancy has kind of increased in this quarter there. Uh, but, you know, the, just two related questions over there, like, you know, we have uh, received occupation certificate for half a million square feet. Have the tenants commenced uh, the sit-outs there? And oh, when can we see the rentals commence here? Yeah, Kunal, they've already uh, commenced fit-outs, and there is we're seeing strong demand trajectory for the balance half a million that we need as well. Okay, great. Uh, uh, and my second question was on uh, on your uh, slide 21 and your presentation, the balance capex number. If you can just uh, help us reconcile that number, like because that 23 million seems a bit on the higher side. What does this include? Like which, because the assets that the under construction construction projects that you have listed out here. Uh, uh, I mean, I'm, not, I'm, I'm unable to reconcile this number. Sure, Kanan. Let me just help you reconcile this number. So essentially, the balance capex largely is driven by uh, assets which are under construction. And as you said, the bigger chunk of this is the redevelopment building of over a million square feet, which we are doing at uh, a Hyderabad project. So that's uh, taking a big chunk of uh, the cost, which will be almost up of 600 crore out of this uh, 23. Uh, we also have, as Vinod mentioned, we put another building in Pune also to construction. So that again takes a big chunk of uh, this construction cost. So that's coming. Uh, we also have the data center, which is under construction, which is also adding to this number. We've also taken new upgrades uh, now. So one is a clubhouse in Hyderabad, 
uh, we also uh, upgrading uh, our pune asset so those costs also come into this uh, balance construction cost to be incurred so essentially uh, you actually are seeing even an increase versus what we had given out last time so that's also again essentially because of this new building which is coming up in pune and the upgrade so just to add to what pp said the pune building for example was earlier 600000 square feet now it's become a million square feet so we've got 400000 square foot more of area because of extra fsi that came about with the new a uh, change in the development control rules in pune which became an opportunity so we revised the building plan quickly and that construction has come in so that's why that budget also has gone up to accommodate for the additional 400000 square yep got it thanks manod uh pretty one more question for you uh so we we had we did an ncd this quarter at 6.35% so, so that's great but how do you see interest rates going on from here um in say fy23 and and more so in the mid term yeah so kunal uh, obviously we've seen uh, the interest rates uh, on the rise already and uh, we do expect some more increases as we go along in the year now uh, in terms of our cost of debt uh, today about 45% of our uh, debt is fixed cost debt so there obviously we're not seeing an increase but on the variable cost debt obviously we will see increase uh, depending on the trajectory in which the interest rates rise sure that's that's very helpful thanks a lot and all the best yeah thank you thank you we have the next question from the line of satinder singh devi from eon, eon investments please go ahead yeah uh, thanks for the opportunity and uh, uh, congratulations on a stable set of numbers and also for managing expiries very well i think so we got a very small expiry count which goes well i got two questions uh, uh, one for vinod vinod can you uh, give us a flavor on the uh, or a return to office is it slower than what was envisaged 6 months ago because otherwise like in last two years the total number of increase in id staff in large organizations uh, the kind of clients that you have is typically about 25% higher but uh, somehow it is not translating into a great take up so so probably we are return to office is working out slower than was anticipated and is it going to be Uh, something uh, that will get more embedded uh, because two years okay people continue to work from home pcs as 5% return to office and so on so forth so if you could give a, a color on on that uh, and also on your pocharam uh, and porur what are the plans because we seem to be struggling in these two places so so first part of your question <clears throat> uh, out of the two years 18 months pretty much everyone was working from home in the last 6 months you've seen domestic india get back to the desk pretty much between 80 and 90% all of cbd as you can see the traffic is back on the streets all the public places are packed in the airline you don't have space to stand in the aircraft possibly if you didn't have a seat so you're seeing everyone back uh, where the action is from a tech footprint point of view two things have happened they've seen tremendous amount of growth in their businesses and they have gone on hiring the online hiring opportunity has given them a better opportunity of expanding the business footprint at that point in time when the need was there however uh, they are realizing that for a lot of collaboration and for a lot of ideation they want their employees back on the desk they have just been very very careful about bringing footprints back so that they don't have to trip on their shoelaces which is why you've seen only the tech footprint moving slowly back to the office everyone else actually in every other place is back so the way we see it is it's like between march and may our occupancy is within our parks it moved from 14 to 25% the way we see it is it will move really quickly towards the 50% number and what is also happening is as you're seeing new growth and new space and retrofitting of current space they have started accommodating for recreation entertainment open spaces elbow room for collaboration so by default they are de-densifying very slowly but very smartly on their footprint and because of that they are asking for more space that's contiguous so we have started seeing even that as clients are coming back they are trying to lock up more contiguous space within the neighborhoods for accommodating the same number of employees and the growth in a far more uh, open manner than the densified manner they were used to earlier 
So all of those trends have started becoming visible. It's just that it's moving slowly, but you must remember that the volume of people working, working in the tech footprint is massive. So even when I say 10% change, it converts to 50,000 people. And that's how the number is changing across the board. So we are seeing the footprint coming back. Our food courts are getting full. People are uh, waiting in line to get their dosa in the afternoon. It's a very pleasant sight uh, in most of our parks now. Mr. Bedi, uh, does it answer your yeah. question? Uh, 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 okay, there was a second part to it, but somehow I seem to have lost the line. Yeah, we but lost you for a second, I think, probably. Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. Sorry, what was the second part of your question? The second, second, second was uh, 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 our plans to, to address the challenges at Pocharam and Poru. Uh, uh, what is it that uh, we plan to do because the occupancy seems to be uh, struggling and stuck? So we are not seeing any challenge in Poru. Chennai market is the way it is, and we are beginning to see it picking up. So we, will, we are reasonably confident of easing this space out uh, significantly in this financial year. For Pocharam, uh, we've not seen strong demand. I don't see strong demand coming back to that part. Uh, we are watchful of it, but I wouldn't uh, give you any direction on leasing that space in this financial year. It's really negligible uh, area that we have left there to lease it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fine. Uh, okay. Uh, and the question for Preeti. Preeti, uh, 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 have we done a, a sensitivity analysis of uh, 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 what uh, the interest rate increase uh, will have in terms of the impact on the distribution? Because while we do have about a 40% fixed. Uh, I think it's also a reality that a lot of it, uh, that almost 40% of that uh, uh, matures in this financial year 23 itself. So our percentage of fixed will fall. And given the way the interest rates are headed, okay, so I think uh, uh, there could be a material uh, impact on the on the uh, on the DPU. So 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 uh, any any view on that? Yeah. Uh, so we don't have a substantial part of the fixed rate maturing this year. We just had about. Uh, one uh, issuance which happened uh, the star immediately after the listing with mature. Uh, otherwise, uh, everything else remains intact. Uh, yeah, no, yes, of course, it's the fact that the variable uh, cost debt, that's something which will uh, see a rise. Uh, now it depends on how much uh, do we see in the financial year. Uh, but uh, that should not have a very material impact on the overall cost. Of course, it will have some bit. But I don't expect that to have a very significant uh, impact. Some impact, of course, will remain because to that extent, your interest cost is going to be higher. I just want to add to what Preeti said. What's important in all of this really is speculative supply has paused. Yeah. And with uh, debt not going to be easily available, we are seeing a significant opportunity in the micro markets where we are dominant to be able to bring in collaborative supply and take a larger market share going forward. So actually, we are more keen to build much faster because we have so much headroom for debt. We want to take that, use that right. And as we are seeing, because of the inflationary pressures, we are seeing rents moving up. And that's a big opportunity going forward. Yes, no, you're right. You know, I think uh, uh, rent inflation, okay, with a lag is a, is a, is a clear opportunity for for the sector, okay, it's just that because the occupancy is still low, okay, probably it'll take about four quarters more to flow in. But I think you're bang on. Uh, one housekeeping question, Preeti. Uh, uh, this uh, mind space Millard, our RFO uh, uh, revenue from uh, ops has gone up uh, quarter on quarter from 206 million to 287. So that's a material 40% jump. Uh, 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 what has caused this? But the NOI is stuck at the same level. So NOI is 181 has moved to 186. So, so anything we are missing here? So hi. Uh, this is slide. This is slide. Yeah, slide 26. Slide 26. That's actually uh, the square VKC number. Look, no, I, I'm talking of mind space Millard, the, the, the line above that, okay. Okay, so actually I think that's a typo there. So this has both the projects. Uh, avocado, it's basically for the SPV avocado. 
which has both the projects, Malad as well as the city bank building in BKC. So this actually is a combination of the two, and the BKC building is generating rent now. So you have part of the rent which comes in this quarter, which was not there last. Okay, year. so you are saying the the RFO uh, against M minus plus Malad. Uh, Covers uh, the revenue both from the Malad and BKC, yeah, that's and right. the NOI is split up. Okay, okay, so yeah, fine, that's fine. Right. That's fine. And and uh, one final word, PC. Uh, I think the NDCF uh, build-up is looking much better this time than previous. So so compliments for that also. I think it's much cleaner. Thank you. Uh, uh, compliments. Yes. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. All the best. Thank you so much. Thank you. Before we move to the next question, we would like to remind participants to ask a question. You may enter a star and one. We have the next question from the line of Shashank Savla from Somerset Capital Management. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, thanks uh, for the opportunity. Uh, my first question is uh, on the occupancy. So if you look at the micro markets, we've seen uh, vacancies increase in Mumbai, Pune, Hyderabad, um, even though the environment is getting better. So overall, when do you see the actual occupancies improve for the micro market as well as for yourself so uh, most of the micro markets we are in if you give you an example for Pune, out of a large portfolio that sits for us in Pune, we have less than 23,000 square feet of vacancy currently and we are desperately wanting to bring in more supply to lease as fast as we can so the grade a assets will see traction of leasing disproportionately higher to the cumulative supply in the micro markets. We've been saying that time and time again, and you will see that pan out even more strongly in the coming quarters, where grade A assets will be lapped up, and the rest of the assets will still show vacancy. So while your macro numbers will show vacancy, there'll be a disproportionate occupancy rise on the grade A in each of these micro markets. Because I'm just, uh, for example, I'm looking at Madhapur, which um, you've been mentioning is a very strong market. But on the on the overall macro numbers, the vacancy rate has increased from 2.6% in 2019 to 6% in 2020 to 10 and now last quarter increased to 12%. So it seems that the supply is increasing at a much faster rate, um, even though demand is stronger. Yeah, so what happens is in Hyderabad has a unique scenario where there's nothing called FSI, so the densities vary from site to site. And each of those blocks are a million or two million that suddenly adds to the supply bucket. They're not necessarily all grade A. So when you start looking at them and breaking them out into grade A and other supply, you will see that grade A has started to see traction of occupancies, which are rising. Uh, if we were constructing in the neighborhood uh, a 1.8 million asset right through COVID. We started pouring concrete right at the beginning of COVID and even before we could complete the asset, we have fully leased that asset uh, to a, a global 100 client. So if you're building the right asset in the right micro market, you, work, you got demand even in those markets. So you're already seeing demand rise right now. Right. And overall, your current occupancy levels are around 84%. Like what uh, how much time do you think it will take to reach the pre-COVID levels of like 90% plus? So we are hopeful of this financial year getting us in the 90s. Right. Okay. Uh, and the second question was on the CapEx bit, uh, which the 23 billion, which is mentioned. Approximately what timeline is that for? Is that over the next three years, four years? Yeah, so it will be between three to four years because some projects have just started and they'll take about three to four years to be completed. But and major start will be within uh, the three years. You'll have some spill over to the fourth year. Okay. And is it safe to assume that the CapEx will be funded from debt so the other revenues would then fall into the NDCS? That's right. Okay. And for the ROFO, I just wanted to understand what is the evaluation criteria uh, and as well as uh, what's the funding for the ROFO? Is, is that also predominantly through debt? Yeah. So in terms of evaluation, I would say, uh, you know, the board also and the unit holders would also like to see the acquisition being accretive. So that's what uh, we as a manager also will uh, look at. Uh, in terms of how we are going to uh, do the acquisition, 
Uh, now, obviously, uh, in all likelihood, it could be a swap of uh, units of the REIT with the shares of uh, CSPB. Uh, while the other options of uh, debt are available, given that the low debt that we are sitting on, but in all likelihood, this could be by way of a swap. So we still need to conclude it, but uh, this is the initial event. Okay. And is there any plan to increase the share of the fixed portion, given that uh, going forward, there is there seems to be a rising rate environment. Uh, is it easy or uh, uh, economical to increase that share from this current 46%? Yeah, we would still uh, look at uh, converting some of our variable cost debt into fixed. Uh, we know that we already entered a rising interest rate situation. So we'll still work towards uh, converting some of our variable to fixed. Let's see how much we're able to achieve. But the plan clearly is to do a little more of fixed cost. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Samir Basiwala from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you so much, and good evening, everyone. Uh, if I look at uh, the whole of fiscal 22, then roughly about 240 crore gap between the capex and the debt drawn. So how should we think about it um, for fiscal 23? So, uh, Samir, uh, as I had mentioned last time as well, uh, there will be little amount of uh, the gap, which will be still funded out of debt. It's going to be a small component. But otherwise, uh, otherwise you should not see too much of a gap. Some will still remain, as I've always been maintaining. But major chunk of your uh, distribution should be funded out of the SFO. Okay, okay. So how do you plan to make up for this 240? You said some would uh, would still be there, so maybe 150, 200 crores. How will you make up for this big number? Uh, so tell me, that's one number which will only, I would say, neutralize eventually over a period as uh, the NOI growth happens uh, on account of revisions, escalations, occupancies, etc. Uh, so that's something which uh, hopefully over the next two, three years, we should try to rationalize. But till then, some bit of this will continue. It will keep, hopefully, I'm hoping that that should keep reducing. But uh, some bit, um, I won't say that's too significant, but some bit you may be able to see in the coming year as well. Okay, I appreciate that's very helpful, but I'm a little confused. Uh, will subs this go down substantially in fiscal 23, or will it take two, three years? So I'm not very clear on your answer on that. Uh, so I wouldn't say it will go down substantially from where it is uh, today, but it will definitely see a decreasing trend over the next uh, two to three years, as I said. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that you will see a straight uh, big reduction, but it will neutralize over the next two to three years. Okay. And is this what you had in mind when you were answering previously that the rental growth or the top end growth may not necessarily translate into NDCF growth. What was this a big item out there? Uh, some bit of that, but also other parts also come in, uh, Samir. You like you'll have interest cost uh, increases, all these your tax, etc. All those also come into play. That's why you'll not see exactly the same growth in NOI translating to an NDCF growth. Got it. Got it. Very clear, PT. Uh, thanks a lot for this. Thank you. And uh, another question is on Eroli East. Uh, we have roughly about 2.1 million square feet um, which we need to develop. So what are thoughts on this rough timelines? Uh, you know, when when do you expect to start on this? So, uh, Sabi, while it was 2.1 million square feet, the valuation we had taken only for approximately 800 or 1,000 square feet. Uh, that still gives us room to build more. Uh, and we want to take that up. We're just waiting for the SEC regime to settle in so that we can bring in a non SEC building into that whole landmark. Okay, Vino. But does it mean that you're taking only a small portion of your valuation is one thing, but you have disclosed a much bigger volume number? So are you tentative that the balance may or may not happen? Time, uh, uh, as you can remember, we had just entered into COVID. And so to be Conservative, we are taking 800,000 square feet for the value, while the potential was to build 2.1. Uh, whatever gives us maximum value accretion, we will exactly do that for the asset. So we are seeing how the demand trajectory is moving. 
nothing stops us from increasing the density if we see the demand is going to give us a return. Okay, great. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Before we move to the next question, we would like to remind participants to ask a question. You may enter star and one. We have the next question from the line of Abhinav Sinha from Jeffries. Please go ahead. Hi, everyone. Uh, just had a few clarifications. So, uh, did I hear correctly that you're expecting uh, occupancies to rise to 90 odd percent pretty soon, maybe in the next one, two years? Is that correct? Uh, uh, you mean to say occupancies from the current occupancy of area? Yes. Physical occupancies, I think, will be around the 50s and 60 percent over the end of the financial year. Not area. Uh, sorry, so uh, physical uh, occupancy will be how much? Physical occupancy today is 25%. Right. The way we see it is it will be between 50 and 60% by the end of the year. Uh, and the committed so occupancies will rise closer to 90 odd percent. That's right. Yeah? That's right. So, I would say. Okay. Uh, the second question on uh, the various micro markets and, you know, the rents have been flat, uh, understandably so also. Uh, but which are the ones that, uh, you know, as of now, you're most positive on and where we can see the movement, um, say, you know, right. upwards in the next three, four quarters? All of these markets are seeing a strong trajectory of rent movement. Yeah. Okay, so uh, an uptick of, say, 5 odd percent is likely in the year or you, you, you are hoping for higher numbers? I can't make... Uh, statements that can directly correlate this, but I think the markets are getting stronger for uh, accepting. Uh, yes. They want quality real estate. It's not really about rent. Okay. And quality real estate is taking away, uh, attracting most of the tenants, and you're getting the value you want once you are able to offer a quality offering. So grade A is definitely going to see a, a rise in rent. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, as we have no further questions, we will now close the Q&A session. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Mindspace Business Park Street, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.